Today on Christian World News. I always think that God is with me everywhere I go. And praise the Lord, He'll help you in a mysterious way. Kidnapped by a stranger, this young man was set free with a song of praise. And a wind in the house of Islam, how God is bringing Muslims to faith in Jesus Christ. Plus, his conversion to Christ cost this man his family. How the power of God brought them back together. A young man finds salvation in a song. Hello everyone, I'm George Thomas. And I'm Charlene Aaron. Wendy Griffith is on assignment. Where Wiley Myrick is a little guy just 10 years old, so he was the perfect prey for a kidnapper. But Willie had a powerful weapon on his side, a gospel song. That song has led to a worldwide testimony about Willie's faith and God's awesome power. 10-year-old Willie Myrick loves playing the drums, something he hopes one day to do at his church. Born to atheist parents, Willie was raised by his godmother, Codetta Bateman, who took him to church. It was there that he learned about God and developed a passion for the Bible. Pastor, he talks about, like, different scriptures, and we're on Genesis 31 now. But he tells us a little stuff about him, and he goes over it every Sunday. Codetta says she's seen Willie's faith blossom over the years. Faith is important to this house and, and everything, and, and believing in God is important. So I should, you know, in this house we go to church. He know God, he know Jesus. While most kids his age are busy playing video games, Willie spends his free time studying the Word of God. His favorite scripture? Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He says God is his best friend. I always think that God is with me everywhere I go. Like when I'm in bed, he has a chair, he's just watching. CBN News got a taste of his love for memorizing the books of the Bible. Okay, ready? Go. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. In April, while playing with his dog in the front yard of his Atlanta home, Willie came face to face with a kidnapper, putting his childlike faith to the test. Some guy came up in a silver, silver or gray hundo cord. Man tussled me in the car. The man tussled you in the car. Willie says he wanted to yell for help, but the man covered his mouth. Traumatized, Willie feared for his life. It's cursing, cursing, cursing. I was thinking that he's gonna hurt me that bad, real bad. Thrown into the back of a locked car, Willie's fear soon gave way to faith in the form of a gospel song he learned at church. He began singing it in the back seat. God's my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every prayer. Every praise is to our God. The popular song, Every Praise, by Grammy Award-winning artist Hezekiah Walker is one of Willie's favorites. I knew it by heart. I sang the whole thing by heart. And God, if you praise the, if you praise the Lord, he'll help you in a mysterious way. Despite repeated threats, Willie sang nonstop while the man drove around for three hours. I was just sing singing passion and pride, so I didn't care what, what happened. Agitated by the constant singing, the man eventually let Willie out of the car. He was shaken but unharmed. I guess he was mad, so he dropped me out. Willie ran to a nearby home and called his godmother. Police have no leads in the case, but have released this sketch of the man who kidnapped Willie. While she rejoices over his safe return, Willie's godmother continues to pray for the capture of the kidnapper. He need to be caught. He got to be caught. caught. Willie's story made headlines around the world, leading to talk show appearances like Arsenio Hall. He even got the chance to perform his song of deliverance with Walker. While he's enjoying being in the media spotlight, he says he's just an ordinary kid who serves an extraordinary God. It really doesn't matter to me. As long as I still have Jesus, 
and he's still working, doing his little magic. Well, it's not magic, it's just power. Ordinary kid with simple faith. Simple faith, and that's what I took away from this story, George. Faith is simple. Mm -hmm. Remember, the scripture talks about having a childlike faith. That's how God wants all of us as believers to be. And remember, praise is a weapon. When the children right. of Israel went exactly. into battle, they sang a song. And God gave them the victory. And that guy kept praying kept and praising, too. Praising and praying. Amen. That's fantastic. Great story, Charlie. Thank Wonderful. You. Okay, moving overseas. 25 years ago this week, Chinese troops moved against student protesters in Beijing's Tiananmen Square. China's brutal crackdown on pro-democracy demonstrators left hundreds dead and plunged the country into chaos. Every year, the Chinese government tightens security on the anniversary, but this year, it's even tougher. There are troops on the streets of Beijing and police in greater numbers manning checkpoints around the square. The government has also detained many critics of the communist regime. The anniversary is also a tense time for China's churches. Marion Smith of the Victims of Communism Memorial says persecution against Christians has increased this past year. It is the targeting of individuals. Uh, so it's not only churches that are built, it's not only ministers, it's not only uh, Christians who gather in house churches in China, but it's even business owners who happen to be Christian. There's an example just this past month of a couple who owned a bookstore and uh, a communist official, a local leader, uh, found uh, that they were selling a hymnal. And those two individuals were arrested and we don't know uh, what has happened to them since. You can see the full interview with Marion Smith at our website, cwnews.org. One China expert says the Tiananmen crackdown actually helped church growth in China. Loyola University of Maryland professor Karsten Valla says the brutal massacre caused many Chinese intellectuals and other elites to lose faith in communism and embrace Christianity. Karsten says China's church has grown so large that the Communist Party fears its influence. Persecution against unregistered house churches has actually caused the number of believers to grow. By some estimates, there are more than 100 million Christians in China. More than any other place in the world, Christians suffer the worst persecution in North Korea. Yet in the heart of Pyongyang, a Christian-backed university is bringing Western education to the country's elite. Gary Lane has more. Graduation ceremonies are common occurrences this time of year at American colleges and universities. But look closely, this is no Ivy League school. These 44 students, all males, receive their diplomas from Pyongyang University of Science and Technology in North Korea. It's a first time event for the Hermit Kingdom. Never before have science and technology students graduated from a foreign funded, foreign staffed university in their country. In 2011, university founder and president James Chin Kyung Kim appeared on the 700 Club shortly after the university opened. We are training the top elite. So now over 300 students we are teaching. And uh, all, you know, this Pyongyang University of the Science Technology is very different than any other university in, in the world. Different because North Koreans live in a closed, militaristic, authoritarian society. Rarely are they given access and exposure to foreigners and Western ideas. But here they learn computer engineering, agriculture and life science, and international finance and management. Students are given internet access, and their housing and meals far exceed the quality of other North Korean universities. Their professors are foreigners like this instructor who likened his homework experience to teacher's heaven. Because we give them homework, uh, but we tell them only do five, but they usually do 10. And then on the weekend, maybe sometimes we say, oh, you have too much homework in the other class, so no homework, but they do homework anyway. While the school is backed by evangelical Christians in South Korea and the United States, the university does not promote Christianity. Kim says he's not a communist or a capitalist, he's a loveist who is building bridges of peace on the Korean peninsula. He says before he started the university, he was arrested and accused of being a CIA spy. His North Korean captors forced him to write a will, but he responded with love because he wanted to build bridges of peace on the Korean peninsula. Peace comes with the price. Everyone would like to have peace, mm -hmm. but who must to pay the price? Who's going to pay? 
we our creature, yeah. God's people, can pay the price. And most of the class of 2014 graduates say they'll either continue their advanced studies in Europe or immediately begin work. Gary Lane, CBN News. Coming up, a fresh wind blows through the Islamic world, drawing men and women out of darkness and into the light. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. Eight years ago, my husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Inside every child is a hero, a leader, a friend to others, someone who helps out, who does the right thing, who dreams of what they can be, but they still need our help. What should I do? What should I say? How should I feel? That's where Superbook comes in. It provides moral and spiritual truths through situations children can relate to, teaching God's Word to the children you love. Join the Superbook DVD Club and receive Superbook's newest episodes as they're available, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Get Superbook today and watch the miracles happen. Nigeria is the most violent country in the world for Christians. The West African nation tops the Open Doors Top 10 Violence list. In a recent 17-month period, Open Doors researchers recorded nearly 2,100 Christian murders in Nigeria and more than 3,600 churches destroyed. Spokesperson Emily Fuentes says violence against Christians in Nigeria is getting worse. We're seeing in 2014 that even more secular and, and national and international news is covering what's going on just because it's it's getting more and more horrific um, with the kidnapping of these these girls and, and other horrible bombings and, and attacks against Christian communities. Civil war and Islamic attacks against Christians caused Syria to gain the number two spot. Egypt is number three on the most violent countries for Christians list, followed by Central African Republic, Mexico, Pakistan, Colombia, India, Kenya, and Iraq. And you can learn more about the rankings and what Christians are facing by logging on to the Global Lane blog at CBNNews.com. Well, when it comes to persecution of Christians, Islamic nations do chop the charts, but there's another trend moving through those nations as well. That's right, missionary David Garrison has written a profound book about the huge number of Muslims coming to Christ in the heart of the Islamic world. He's written a book about it. It's called A Wind Blows Through the House of Islam. Recently, I spoke with him about it. What did you discover in all of these interviews when you, when you traveled around the world? Well, George, what we discovered was that God is at work in the Muslim world and that God has Muslims on his front burner, as it were, because he's drawing thousands upon thousands of Muslims to faith in Jesus Christ from one end of the Muslim world to the other. And interestingly, you describe in your book how it really, there's a breakthrough that is happening. Something special is happening really since the 20th century, 20th and the 21st century. Mm -hmm. What happened the first 13 centuries? Well, that's what's amazing because for the first several centuries, Muslims and Christians were interacting with each other on a daily basis. And yet you have to move forward nearly 12 and a half centuries before you find the first Muslim movement to Christ. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, in the first of the last 13 years, though, of the 21st century, just the last 13 years, we've seen 69 movements. Mm. This is indeed the greatest turning of Muslims to Christ in 14 centuries. And, and what do you think is the impetus? What is happening? What is God doing in this time period, in our generation, in our lifetime, that perhaps he didn't do uh, generations ago? Well, this is what the book explores. And I, I list in the book 10 bridges of God, 10 things that God is using, because we're hearing it from the testimonies of mm. these Muslim background believers. Mm -hmm. The exciting thing is that there's some things that are possible today, like like CBN, yeah. that weren't possible 20 years ago or the 100 internet, years ago. The internet, satellite television. Exactly. Yeah. God is using many different ways to get the gospel to people. Is there a, a common thread that you see of how God is intercepting the lives of these Muslims. There is a variety, and that's why we talk about nine rooms in the House of Islam, but there's also common threads. There's the Word of God, the power of the Gospel, and the encounter with the living Christ. Mm. This is not a religion that Muslims are embracing. It's not an ideology or a culture. They're meeting Jesus, and Jesus is changing their lives. Mm. What does that wind look and sound like as it, as it blows through the House of Islam? Well, that's the great thing. It sounds familiar. Mm. It sounds like that same wind of the Holy Spirit that transformed my life and your life. And when we see and meet and listen to the lives and the stories of these Muslim background believers, we recognize a brother and a sister because the same Holy Spirit that's in my heart and your heart is clearly at work in their heart as well. You have a section here at the very end. It's called Our Response. Mm -hmm. uh, in essence, you're trying to, your message to the American church that we should not be afraid of Islam, Muslims, and we should not be afraid of what God is doing within the Muslim world. Talk about that. Well, you know, there's never been a time of greater conflict between the House of Islam and the West. Mm -hmm. And yet at this very time is the moment when the Holy Spirit is drawing Muslims to faith in Christ. And what I hope is simply that brothers and sisters around the world who recognize the work of the Holy Spirit will see that this is our moment to be loving and kind and witnessing and praying for Muslims because God is in fact doing a great work in our day. We need to get on board with it. We need to be a part of what God is doing. Okay, well, fantastic. It's an incredible book. It's called A Wind in the House of Islam, How God is Drawing Muslims Around the World to Faith in Jesus Christ. You can get it wherever books are sold as well as online. David Garrison, sir, thank you so much for your thank work. Thank you, George. And God all that you, you do for the kingdom of God. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Next, his conversion to Christ made this man an outcast from his own family, but his faithful obedience to the call of love won them over. Hello? Is this thing on? Hey kids, do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Well, do you? Yeah. Then you're gonna love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes and Google Play now. CBNnews.com. News you want, when you want, 24 7. Stay current with up to the minute stories. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, New York. I don't have to wait for my news anymore. CBNnews.com at your fingertips all day long. I only watch the stories I want to see. I find the story, I click on it, and boom, I'm there. Embassy in Washington, Eric Stackelbeck, CBN News. The source for your news, CBNnews.com. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. Eight years ago, my husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy.
And welcome back to the broadcast. Imagine what it would be like for a second if your decision to follow Jesus Christ made you an outcast from your family and even a target for death. Well, that's what happened to the man in our next story. That's right. But as Ephraim Graham tells us, the power of love broke down the barriers and reunited him with his loved ones. This story takes place in Ethiopia, and it comes to us from our friends at The Voice of the Martyrs Canada. Abdu and his father, Suleiman, spend time praying and studying the Bible together. Some might call that a miracle, since the two did not speak for nearly 20 years. Why? Because at the age of 16, Abdu decided to leave Islam and follow Jesus. The young man's journey of faith began with an unexpected visit. I was sleeping and Jesus woke me up, and it was like a dream or revelation. Abdu gave his life to Christ after reading from a borrowed Bible. His decision made his family angry, because in their Muslim community, leaving Islam brings disgrace. Village leaders tried to intimidate Abdu by ordering a gang of young men to attack him. As I was walking to school, this gang met me on the road and they beat me very badly with a rope. They asked me if I was going to continue to be a Christian and if this was my final decision. They said if it was, they would kill me. Still, Abdu refused to renounce Jesus and his father became so angry that he tried to kill Abdu. We threw Abdu out of our home because of his faith in Jesus. We chased him out and he went to another village. During his years in exile from his family, Abdu worked at a church as a security guard and grew stronger in his faith. He read more than 100 Christian books and began discipling other former Muslims who had come to Jesus. But Abdu's mother missed him terribly. And after many years of separation, she slipped away to visit her son. During those six years, I heard that Abdu was not drinking alcohol or doing bad things anymore. So I decided to go see him secretly. Impressed by the changes in her son's life, Samira began to consider Christ. However, it took 10 years before she too would leave Islam to follow Jesus. I believed that my son's faith was true and correct. So I decided to follow Jesus. About a year later, Suleiman's heart softened under the influence of God's big love. Now he and the rest of his family, about 40 of them, are all Christians. This hut on the family property is now a place of worship to the Lord and for hearing the gospel. I'm very happy that my family has come to Jesus. But the most exciting thing to me is that a place near my home is now being used as a church. People are coming and praying and giving their lives to Christ. Abdu is now a missionary to Muslims in areas that are hostile to the gospel. As for Suleiman, while he and his family are persecuted for their faith, he says he's not about to return to Islam, and he looks forward to eternity with the Lord. The fundamentalists can do their worst to us. Even if they kill us, We're not afraid because Christian believers will bury us. For us, it's better to be alone with Christ than to live in a community without Christ. We don't feel fear. These days for us are not a threat. Ephraim Graham, CBN News. It is. You know, the the price you pay for leaving Islam, Muhammad, and then the price you pay when you accept Jesus Christ. It's it's incredible. The Ministry of Reconciliation at work in that story. Absolutely. Beautiful. Well, folks, if you have stories like this that you would like to share, something miraculous God has done in your life or in your family, please tell us about it. You can post your testimony on our Facebook page. We'll be back right after this. Give me that. (laughs) Bye. Ah, Sure, life is busy, but I found a way to make a huge difference in people's lives. I guess you could say I'm changing the world right here from home. I bring medical supplies and doctors to people in need and dig wells so that villagers can have clean and safe water to drink. I make it possible to preach the gospel in over a hundred countries, including right here in America. And when disaster strikes, I'm there providing food, thank you, and emergency supplies to give people hope again. Every day, CBN and I are making the world a better place. Here you go. My life is hectic, so I join CBN through Pledge Express. My bank does all the work, and I know that my gift is being used where it's needed most. 
So become a CBM partner and join Pledge Express because you can do a world of good right from where you are. Hi, good morning. Are you ready to get started? We all want to live in the favor and anointing of God. We want His wisdom to solve problems and His provision for all we need. The Bible tells us the Lord has put eternity in our hearts. Each of us wants the certainty of heaven, to know our lives have purpose and that we are playing a vital role in accomplishing His plan for all mankind. In Pat and Gordon Robertson's latest DVD teaching, Living Under God's Blessing, you'll discover how to receive wisdom to solve today's problems, the keys to provision for meeting all your needs, and how you can be a part of His plan for the world today. Call now to receive Living Under God's Blessing, featuring the three-time Emmy-nominated series, Made in Israel. May God bless you, and may you enjoy and live under the blessing of the Lord always. Living Under God's Blessing, available now. And finally on the broadcast tonight, you know, the Bible refers to many nations, many nations will come together to the city of Jerusalem to worship the Lord. It happened again recently when a group of Brazilians came to the Tower of David in Jerusalem's old city. Chris Mitchell tells us more. From late afternoon and throughout the evening, Brazilians gathered to celebrate the God of Israel. Ana Paola Bessa led the worship. In her home country, she's performed concerts with as many as a million people. She believes Brazil has a special destiny with Israel. I believe the Brazilian nation is arising to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Many Brazilians from all over Brazil, they are coming to Israel in order to pray. Pray for Israel and pray for Brazil too, in this place, in this nation. We have a big role in this because Brazil is under revival and the Holy Spirit is raising up the intercessors on behalf of the end times. Besa says Brazil's revival is changing the nation. Today we have almost 40% of the population declaring that they are born again Christians and the churches are full, the people are open to receive Jesus, even on the streets. Brazilians bring an exuberance to their worship. The redemptive gift of Brazil, this, this joy, this celebration to Jesus, and that's why we bring it to Israel, Amen. because it's our redemptive gift. We believe we have a destiny, a prophetic destiny, to pray, to bless, and to bring the second coming of the Lord. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Well, from the streets of the United States to all around the world, to Brazil, great stories. Excellent stories. Praise God. Well, thank you so much for joining us this week. Until next week, goodbye and God bless you.